He claims he doesn't like puzzles, but he's one of the best at taking random tools and scraps and turning them into masterpieces. We're talking with artist Alex Smithson about his urban art along the River's Edge Trail, coming up on this episode of We're No Damn Experts. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shannon Newth. And And we're we're No No Damn Damn Experts. Experts. Today in the studio, Shannon, we have an amazing artist. Yes. Very excited he's here. Um, I fangirled over this artist (laughs) for a long time because the work is Mm. nearly everywhere in Great Falls. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to put him in a movie and then flaked. I didn't even get to go to You when flaked? He, yeah. Or he flaked? No, he, <laughs> I flaked. Like, hey, there's going to be this film crew coming and I'm going to be there and everything's going to be great. And then I got sick and so I wasn't oh, there. Oh, no. Yeah. Which everyone was happy that I was not there. <laughs> They're glad you got sick. <laughs> right. That I did not go. This was before my event. time. I don't know what happened yeah. there. Yeah, uh, Jason Laird, you may yeah, know him, I, stepped mm-hmm, in and helped, a little bit. <laughs> helped out. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get to know him a little bit further and yes. deeper. Uh, we're going to ask a lot of questions today. So welcome <laughs> to the podcast, Hi. Alex Smithson. Yay! Great to be here. So Alex, um, you got to star in our docuseries episode, uh, The Story of Art in America. Yep. Um, I picked you and you were like, what, why woman, why are you asking me to do this? I'm like, cause your art is Amazing. super cool. Yeah. But how long have you been an artist? I think that might be a weird question, but uh, we'll start there. I think everyone starts out as an artist doing something as a mm-hmm. kid, whether it's painting in ketchup or actual <laughs> paint or, uh, I've always done some sort of painting or sculpting, a little bit of woodwork, but started doing the metal art about 18 years ago started wow started welding at a construction job and bought a little welder fret home and started making little tiny things here and there just slowly evolved into bigger stuff over the years so how would you describe your art today like the metal art that you do (laughs) because it's not like you just find a nice straight piece of metal and build it and shape it into anything you're yeah, a lot You're of my stuff. Scrounging. Yeah, my stuff kind of stands out because a lot of it's made out of tools that mm-hmm. I find at old garage sales and thrift stores, and use a lot of car parts that I get from auto mechanic shops for free. And wow, basically whatever parts I can get my hands on, if it looks like something and gives me an idea for a project, I'll use it. Do you ever go on like a, a walkabout in alleys and try to like find Steel whatever stuff. random things are on the ground? I find a lot of metal art in the street when I'm just yeah. walking down the sidewalk, <laughs> little yep. nuts and bolts and yeah. random things. So. Yeah. Well, that makes it more uh, affordable sourcing of materials, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Some of the projects can get a little expensive if I have to buy new materials for it. But yeah. how do you, like, you would have to have a pile of material before you could even start thinking. Well, I'm going to put it together to make it look like this. Or do you start with, Ooh, I want to yeah. create something that looks like this, and then you find pieces that go into it. Yeah, does the idea or the materials come first? Like chicken Usually or egg? Usually a little of bit thing? of both. Okay. Sometimes, like I have a huge hmm. pile of material at home, and uh, I can't guess how many thousands of pounds, but I might just need one or two little parts out of it at a time. Hmm. Some parts I've had for over 10 years, and then I wow. come up with an idea for it. Other stuff, I see it, and I know immediately what I'm going to do with it. Mm. Wow. So, That's the artistic brain. I don't have that. I'd be like, I don't know what to do with this bolt. I'm definitely <laughs> definitely running out of room to put buckets and yeah, coffee cans full of parts. What's like the What's the maybe most unusual random piece of equipment or, or material that you've included in one of your sculptures? Mm. 
suppose a lot of, maybe it's all random to a lot of people, I suppose. Find a lot of cool old yeah. wrenches that have the patent dates on them from oh, the early 1900s. Neat. And oh. I kind of feel bad putting them in a sculpture, <laughs> but it's either that, <laughs> that or I just put like it in a, a toolbox yeah. and save it in a collection. Seems like a great way to preserve it and like help it live on is yeah. by including it in artwork then. Yeah. yeah, I have a few parts that I've used that I have no idea what their original intention <laughs> was, if it was a car part or oh. so I've tried to find out and no one seems to know what they were, but it looked yeah. like something, so I used it. Huh. So your art can be found along the River's Edge Trail, which means it's fairly large in scale, and then you also have smaller pieces that used to and maybe still are at Montana Mosaic. Yeah, they moved from downtown to up on 10th Avenue South. Mm-hmm. So it's a little nicer location, a little more traffic through there. Yeah. I also have stuff at the History Museum okay. and a couple automotive shops sell stuff for me. Well, of course they would. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good audience there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do you do you find the, the pieces at the automotive shop, like people walk in, they're like, why is this weird thing? Or do you find that you get a new, like, art appreciator someone who may not be into the oils and the pencil sketches like oh i see all these bolts and wrenches formed together this is pretty dang cool and they enter art that way where they wouldn't normally enter the art world yeah some people are probably surprised to see stuff for sale at the automotive shop and (laughs) that they can't put into their car (laughs) yeah a lot of them are spending money on car repairs they might not buy it but they at least get exposed to it and well, it might even be no. a part that was taken out of their car that they used <laughs> to make something. And that's why they're there uh-huh. still. Yeah. <laughs> Your car part can live on in a piece of art. Well, and it is, I think it does, for maybe someone who doesn't think they're really into art or something like that, it, I think, opens people's eyes to what what is art and the different ways you can be artistic with just what might seem commonplace items yeah, and around a lot of your people, house or workplace. A lot of stuff I use is kind of junk to people, mm-hmm. and then they see, like the shovel pine cone I made out of 125 shovels. People throw oh away gosh. shovel heads all the time wow. when they see that, and they're like, wow, I wish I would have saved it and given it to you for another one yeah. type of deal. Do you get a lot of people that call you now when they're getting rid of stuff? Yeah, I get a lot of yeah. calls with I actually, donations. I was like, we have an old <laughs> shovel that we don't, Jason's been trying to figure out what to do with. That was like, That's ah. how my first sculpture started on the River's Edge Trail. I'd really? made a shovel pine cone for my grandmother. It took me almost three years to collect them on my own, the oh shovel heads. Oh and gosh. then that was in the newspaper, and they put out an ad, if people have old shovels, I want to make one for the River's Edge Trail. Yeah. And they started showing up at Park and Rec in a barrel. <laughs> Within, that was handy. Within yeah. a few months, I had enough to make one for the River's Edge Trail. Wow. That was the first piece I put on there in 2004. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah. Tell us about the other work. So 2004, Shovel Cone. Oh, that shovel. was 2014. 14. Four, 2014. Okay. Well, the trail's been existen- in existence since the 80s, so whatever year you throw out, I'll be <laughs> we'll fine be like, with. We'll be like, uh-huh. Like, yeah. okay, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So you got the pine cone. Then mm-hmm. what came next? Uh, then I was hired to make the two eight foot towers that have the lights in them. Ooh. And they just gave me a size and dimension to make them and said, wow. if you can make it with your tool style. And that took me about wow. eight months to make those. Where are, so where is the shovel pine cone? That's right across the street from the Electric City Water Park. Did you ask because you really didn't know or were you trying to educate our listeners? Both. Okay. Both for both for that one because I couldn't place that one in my brain. I okay. do know where some I do know where other of them are, but both because people for my education and for other people. Well, yes. yes. So. Yes. So <laughs> anyway. kind of on the same side as the towers. Yes. Yeah, pretty much right okay. underneath them on the trail where okay. it goes yep. underneath the bridge. Cool. Um, so those that's two pieces mm-hmm. if you're if you're counting along Count at, at home, home people. Yeah. <laughs> Number three. Uh, the third one I believe was the tool tree by the oh, federal okay. courthouse mm, that, that has chains really kind of cool. hanging down that move in the wind. Yeah, that's so cool. I that is my favorite piece. We have that one on one of our stickers that yeah, we hand out. Yeah, because I get to make the stickers. Do you have one of those stickers? You should get one. Of, we'll give you one well, of those stickers when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Uh, I love that it's like a weeping willow tree. Yeah, that's what I was going for. A lot of people yeah. call it a palm tree, but I was going for oh, a weeping willow. I don't see that. Yeah. Why I would don't there... see the palm tree. I see that. Yeah. yeah. People, why would there be a palm tree from a dude making art? People ask that about the octopus. I was just going to say, but there's an octopus. So <laughs> My response <laughs> is always Lewis and Clark fought off many octopi when they <laughs> yeah. came through here, and they're like, that's not right. <laughs> 
we created an entire story about the octopus when it was an octopus when it was installed on the trail about how it's you know natural habitat was the Missouri River and um, fresh water sure. yeah <laughs> exactly um, grizzly bears used to eat them yeah <laughs> they're a good source of protein yeah. like yeah. just an amazing asset so willow tree fourth fourth piece on the trail we t- we hinted around the octopus but i don't think that was the fourth one was it no that one was more recent i yeah. think the spheres were the next 2016 i put up the two 24 inch diameter spheres across the refinery oh okay mm-hmm. one's made out of just yep. nuts like nuts and bolts <laughs> and one of them is nuts bolts chains gears car parts bunch of different random yeah. stuff kind of just in what you had sphere. at that time yeah. okay it seems like a, a perfect sphere it looks like it, it, it would roll. So are you, <laughs> this is going to sound stupid. So everyone, I understand <laughs> that. That's why I'm here. Did you blow up a balloon and then weld around it? Or? Oh. I've had a lot of questions how I do it. It's actually That's an smart. aluminum bowl I had made. Okay. Perfect hemisphere. Oh. And I make two halves and then okay. connecting the halves, still welding them on the inside without oh. hiding the seam is a hard part of making spheres. Yeah, I bet. Wow. You were on the right track. I mean, yeah, balloon's balloon. a little delicate, I've had the but that's the right idea. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah. Oh, see, it you're not alone. It can't possibly be a balloon. <laughs> like, I know no, that component. Not in a regular balloon no. material. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not going <laughs> to weld on top of a balloon and expect the balloon to stay. But it was, you know, my big question was like, oh, my How God. How do you make you? that? Because you're welding. Mm-hmm. It'd be hard to weld with metal underneath it because mm-hmm. you could weld it together yeah. yeah have you ever done that then <laughs> not that i know of. <laughs> okay welding in his dreams he's <laughs> so <sleep> welding <laughs> yeah the spheres number four number five uh, i think that would have been the wind chime that's out by the dam between mm. the interpretive center and the train car caboose parking lot yeah mm-hmm. that's a big auger with big pipes around it that pretty loud in the wind that's a super windy <laughs> spot cool. so yeah seems that's appropriate a beautiful for trail that. yeah walking along there right along the river mm-hmm. oh which you can do i'll just throw this out any time of year yep you know we always think summer for walking on the trail but you can snowshoe along there too walk along there in the winter it's really pretty spot and on our website we have the entire art on the river's edge trail map yeah can or go on a trail treasure hunt scavenger hunt for yeah. all of them so yeah. we've got them all listed mm-hmm. and the artists by who they're from yes so which okay we're we're listing how many total do you have mm, i think 11 or okay wow 11 or 12 maybe including a section of handrail like a safety railing oh. i made that's kind of artsy but okay so we've done what five we're at five okay. number six, six. Uh, i think that's the <laughs> pelican that was made for doug oh, wicks yeah that one's super cool and that That's was made one of my favorites. as kind of a tribute to him for starting the trail. And after mm-hmm. he passed away, it kind of became a memorial for him. Yeah. And people leave flowers at it every year for his birthday and stuff. That's neat. That's got to be neat for you as the artist to see it transform into something like that. Yeah, and Doug was yeah. an amazing guy. Mm-hmm. I got to work with him when I was a kid, well, 17, working yeah. with Montana Conservation Corps. We worked on River's Edge Trail projects with him. Oh, neat. oh. Yeah. And I got in touch with him years later about installing art, and he helped with the first one, the pine cone. That's and a really few other neat. Ones. Wow. I learned the River's Edge Trail has an art committee that works on oh. installations. Yeah. I'm not sure what they do, but I know <laughs> that it exists. Yeah. Like, I don't know what their meetings are like or mm-hmm. what their processes are, but I know there's a committee. Yeah. That's I've never that's been to cool. their meetings, but I met a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Pelican. Six. Seven. Um, kind of losing track. Of I, I, I'm, I'm impressed that you remember. Little did he know there was just going to be a quiz today. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't prep him for this. You need to know the dates and times and locations. Yeah, yeah one of them's a section of safety railing next to okay. the towers on that Central Avenue West walking trail. Mm-hmm. It's like a three foot by three foot square, and there's 1886 railroad track with a date printed oh my on gosh. it. The city cut that out from a section they had. Holy to have me cow! Make that. That's and there's crazy. tools, kind of mosaic style in the middle. Do you feel like I would be so nervous? Uh, this is, I'm also not an artist, but I would be so <laughs> nervous to work with something that historic. Yeah. That, like, you screw <laughs> that up. Like, you don't get a second no, one. No, not so much. That's it's why kind of I have a, a cool deal. wrench collection of ones that are so cool. I 
cannot you weld them. them. Yeah. Because they got to be worth more than anything I would make out of yeah. them. <laughs> well, good job make like not destroying that. Because I would have some found a way to destroy yeah. that somehow. Yeah. <laughs> that's really neat. So, eighth piece on the River's Edge Trail. I think I was counting the spheres, both of them as two, and the towers as two. Oh, okay. So, okay. I'm trying to think what else I have on the trail. Well, the uh, when did we mentioned the octopus or octulpus. Octulpus, mm-hmm. which is one of the most recent... Wait, West Bank there's Park a area. lure too, isn't there? Oh, the fish is the most recent. And that's a memorial for a friend of mine that passed away. Mm. That's a five foot long fish made out of tools and it's cool. up on a pole. So it stands about yeah. seven or eight feet high, I think. That's really neat. And I think and that, that was the neat. last one that was installed. So you've never been at a River's Edge Trail Art Committee meeting. Um, so how do... How does the River's Edge Trail communicate with you, or do you just say, hey, I made an octopus, uh, put it on the trail? Uh, since Doug Wicks <laughs> passed away, I usually go through Park and Rec mm-hmm. and talk with them, and then they have meetings, and they have to pre-approve mm-hmm. things. Once but you concept arts, things and give it to Park and Rec, and then they debate? There's a few, like the tool tree I made just because I wanted to make it for the challenge. I had made a couple of small tables where the branches hold up a glass top, and I wanted to make like a seven or eight footer just for the challenge of it. And then I showed it to the city, and they were like, that's cool. We'll find a spot for it. <laughs> nice. A couple pieces they've actually commissioned me to make, like the pelican for Doug and then the towers. But like the octopus, I just wanted to make it, and I was hoping they'd find a spot for it so yeah. it didn't sit in my yard forever. <laughs> Do you have a lot sitting in your yard? I have a few pieces okay. in my yard, yeah. <laughs> Should so be it, easy to spot So then. we know where you live easily if <laughs> yeah. we drive around. Yeah. Um, now the tool tree is painted. It's it's a colored piece, but that's not very common with your work. Yeah, you... most of my tools I just clear coat. It's yeah. like the old rusty ones mm. they'll get. Go from like an orange rust color to a glossy brown leather look when you clear coat them. Okay. And then they kind of... But the tree, you're like, no, we're going to fancy that one up. Yeah, I wanted to have <laughs> green chains for mm-hmm. the branches and Which paint I, it all Which gives brown. it even more of the effect, I think, when you see it moving around. And that's Do you neat. have to go back and repaint it every now and again? I've repainted the chains one time after oh, a few years because the bad. rust kind of came through on them. Because they're old tire chains that I used for the branches okay. and the leaves hanging down. Hmm. Every time I look at one of your pieces of artwork, I think of when I was growing up, my dad used to make me sort bolts at the shop, <laughs> and he'd get these 55-gallon drums, and he's like, here, this is your job for the day, and like he loaded that thing up with like a skid steer, and so I... S- <laughs> Sometimes it felt like punishment, and most of the time it was because I did something wrong. <laughs> so I like have to sort the bolt that was from the floor, what size it is, put it in the right bin, same with the nuts. Yeah, so yeah, buckets and barrels of nuts and bolts. But if I needed four that were the same size, I would have to go buy them. So oh. I would sort through every bucket <laughs> hey, and barrel to find four that You can find yourself a little yeah. intern. <laughs> there you yeah. go. And yeah. they can <laughs> sort your bolts for you. An art intern yeah. just sorts bolts. Yeah. Did you... Did you like to do you like to do or did you like to do puzzles growing up? I oh. actually dislike puzzles very much. Really? Yeah. I was just I'm thinking. I'm shocked. <laughs> because to me a lot of that is you're piecing together, finding what fits yeah. where for but this broader There's more broader freedom vision. when you're making like a mosaic piece. That's true. You can make it work like versus puzzles. like it has to go here. My mother's always loved puzzles and I've just I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I would think because it's kind of like I think it will it will keep your brain healthy for <laughs> a so long like the, time to those come. Metal right? puzzles, like thinking about the that. little pieces that move around, you got to take them apart. Those are kind of interesting, but like yeah, the, the flat cardboard puzzles yeah, I never like. Not no, for you. No. Don't get him that for a present. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you guys have him for Christmas, don't get him a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> your secret Santa. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, Alex, do you have other works of art that are on display in the public other than what's on the River's Edge Trail? Uh, pretty much just at like art galleries and history museum gift shop and stuff. Yeah. Just stuff for sale, nothing really Do you have small display. scale things or are they all I've large scale? I've made small scale of almost all my big stuff. Oh, the shovel okay. pine cone, I've made eight inch ones out of oh, spoons, yeah, about 125 nice. spoons, wow. five different sizes. Are those thrift store finds as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thrift stores that and makes garage sense. sales yeah. find a mm-hmm. lot of cutlery. Yeah. <laughs> and then the octopus, I've made smaller ones out of trailer ball hitches and spoon oh, handles. Cool. Huh. 
kind of yeah. want to collect these now. Mm-hmm. I, it's kind of cool. In mm-hmm. the towers, I made three foot tower lamps with LED lights in them Ooh. for like household ones. Oh, I kind of want that. That would be cool yeah. here at the office. Oh, that would be. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll make yep. something small and want to <laughs> scale it up just for a challenge. Oh, vice others, versa. Yeah. There's times I make something big and then want to make a smaller version. Yeah. Like the guitars. I've made dozens of yes. guitars. Oh, those are super cool. And then mm-hmm. I made a seven foot guitar. An acoustic style that ended up at the Buffalo Chip in Sturgis, South Dakota. Oh, nice. Oh. Hey. And then I made a Just six on display, f- or did they, like, auction it it's off? It's on display okay. every year at their concert venue there. Oh. So there's pictures of people playing it. So it's <laughs> nice. kind of cool. I feel like we need to get in touch with someone in Nashville and get you some of your big guitar displays out there, too. Yeah, I contacted mm-hmm. a couple of hard rock cafes yeah. and stuff. Oh, and that's a good idea. Sturgis Buffalo Chip yeah. jumped on it and was like, nice. how much do you want for it? How do we yeah. pick it up? And they Very came cool. and picked it up. So, are they, I would imagine, are they pretty, st- because all of these are out in the elements all the time, these are pretty pretty sturdy. I mean, yeah. transporting them isn't too, too big of to an issue. Outdoor stuff, I try to use as much stainless steel mm-hmm. as I can. Yeah. Make it a little lighter. It's mm. not any lighter, but it doesn't rust if it's oh, okay. stainless, so uh-huh. it'll hold up to outdoor weather a little better. Yeah. That is hard because there's, I mean, we get all, you know, 110 to 40, 50 below here. So, I mean, it has to withstand a lot of yeah. changing elements here for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then the animals, birds, squirrels, whatever. Yeah, I think like <laughs> the, along the, trail. the pine cone used to have bark on the trunk that it's mounted to. I think animals kind of scrape that <laughs> off. You can kind of see a little, yeah. I don't know if it's a beaver or what, but <laughs> animals are nice. an issue too, yeah. Yeah, animals are awful. <laughs> For you listeners, you know I have an urban deer issue at my house. So. And it's been a while because it's cold now, but our gophers, yeah. we have lots of gophers, gophers here. Issues. Yeah, anyway. So before you <laughs> settled on metal art... What else were you contemplating? Did you think, oh, maybe I'll become a oil painter? Did a lot of pen drawings in high school. Mm, yeah. A little bit of painting, like I said, ceramics. And I had a house fire when I was 15 and lost everything I had. Oh, wow. Everything I'd made. So, wow. So, looking back, kind of maybe metal art could survive a house fire. And it'll stand <laughs> yeah. up to a yeah. lot more than. That's very true. And like glass work, I've never been involved with because that seems sad if you spend months on something and then drop it or it's a pretty oh fragile piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of, even yeah. ceramic is pretty fragile. Mm-hmm. I had a wow. beautiful ceramic platter that my mom got me one year for Christmas. Loved it. From uh, Clind Pottery in Hinsdale. Loved, loved this place. And I was trying to pull it down from my cupboard and I dropped it on my counter. Mm. Oh. And I thought... I'll just glue it back together. You won't be able to tell, and you could tell. It looked like crap. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's so So. sad. Yeah. So, yeah, not very sturdy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Long-term, if you're not dainty, like I'm not dainty. I'm not dainty, no. Not dainty. Mm -mm. No one's surprised by that. No. (laughs) Who knows us? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So you're a Great Falls kid? I was born in Norway, Michigan, but I've lived in Great Falls since I was about four years old. Oh, okay. so Great Falls kid. Lived in yeah. Reno for a few months when I was like eight, but Great hmm. Falls every other day of my life. Wow. Um, do you have, do people come up to you in Great Falls and like, hey, you're the metal art guy? Like, are you, because no. you have so much known I now, I honestly know think yeah. he's, he's so sly. He's <laughs> like uh, hides away in his workshop and no one ever gets to see yeah. him. Yeah, like, I've never been recognized in public. Yeah, yeah. We'll change that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be your agents. We'll get you. We'll get you out there. Uh, I did see on your Facebook because you do have social media presence showing what you're working on. Uh, you are doing something with a sunflower and yellow uh, screwdriver. Screwdrivers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell us oh, about that I project. Saw that. Yeah. Saw a picture of one a couple of years ago and started collecting yellow handle screwdrivers and you just make the body of the sunflower and the little cluster of nuts in the middle couple green screwdriver handles for the leaves it's kind of a fun little project yeah is that are you working on anything for the river that you can disclose for the river's edge Any trail right larger now? format uh, <laughs> uh items um they haven't told me i couldn't talk about so <laughs> i'm making yes. a, here it comes 
Making a five foot saxophone sculpture for a music oh. teacher that passed away at Great Falls High. Oh. They're going to put that on West Bank Park next to a tree and a picnic table, also oh, in neat. his memory. Oh, wow. wow. That, so that's cool. already a huge challenge for me. Uh-huh. I got the frame of it started. It's going to be covered in wrenches, and then all the keys and rods have to be kind of realistic. Wow. Is that a, is I, it, the shape also seems different yeah. than some of the other things you've created too yeah, is that part of the challenge to, trying to find something bell shaped to use but i ended up just forming that out of quarter inch steel rods okay so it has kind of a unique bell shape for a saxophone yeah. wow how long is that going to take you to make uh my shop is not heated i have like a <laughs> five by ten wood shed believe it or not wow that's it i don't have a garage at all i would know that if i was on the day they did the docuseries but again mm, i was sick like, yeah. yeah a lot of people assume i have a big garage overhead cranes yeah. forklifts and i have very little workspace wow so this that's five foot impressive. saxophone is barely fitting inside my shop oh wow all my bigger pieces i've made on pallets in my front yard so people huh. can just drive by and sit Pretty and watch much. you work. Yeah. They have a tarp up so they can't get flashed by the arc. But yeah, yeah I make stuff, bigger stuff uh-huh. in my front yard on a pallet. We huh. should include this like when people come to visit, like art in the making. Go drive by well, Alex's house. <laughs> yeah, like schedule <laughs> some tours. Re- there you go. We make some income <laughs> that way. From two to four, we're going <laughs> to sit in the yard, drink some Mighty Mo beer, and watch mm-hmm. Alex make metal art. Yeah. yeah. Sell tickets. See? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a you know, fund your projects here. Yeah. Is this your, is that your full-time gig? No, I've worked at the malting plant north of town for 18 years. Okay. Been there since construction. That's how I learned how to weld. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to learn more about the process of going from welding to you sitting there welding and coming up with this concept to create art out of it from, like, job to do you get tired of welding if you're doing no <laughs> when like I was, a lot of welding during construction i was working seven 12 or 14 hour days a week oh my gosh i got one sunday off maybe once a month so i was welding close to 100 hours a week on average oh my gosh and, and the whole time like i was it. doing seams at work during construction i was just imagining what i could make out of little parts yeah and they gave me a bunch of free scrap metal to go home and practice on and i was making mm-hmm. little keychains coat racks wow and then hmm. Just, like I said, slowly evolved into bigger and bigger stuff. Yeah. Who who inspires you? Or do you just, are you that, are you just sitting at home <laughs> getting creative on your own? See a lot of metal art online. There's okay. thousands of other metal artists that make just, you know, 50 foot wide dragons and eagles that are beyond anything I have space to build, but... Mm. Definitely Need inspire me yard. to make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely okay. get inspired by other metal artists. Yeah, wow. I just think that's so like, just such a different mind. Like I'm just so blown away that you can sit there and think like how you can create something else, and that you still want to do it. weld after that many hours and yeah. hours and years of welding. Yeah, I'd it's work like six in the morning till seven, eight at night. Come home, weld for a couple hours before oh, I go gosh. to bed. And- I oh, loved welding yeah. when I first started. Still do, but when I first started, it was like more often than not. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever had a serious welding injury? Ooh. Oh, I burned myself several <laughs> times. I would do that. Yeah. yeah. Nothing major, but. Yeah. That's good. Oh. No cutting accidents or anything. Yeah. Do people call you and commission like, I'd like you oh. to do a bust of my husband? I've never uh, done any, like, busts or portraits. That would get, be cool, though. Get people calling me with commissions every yeah. once in a while. Mm-hmm. Little projects I would never do on my own, but they <laughs> sound like a fun challenge. Yeah. You're yeah. like, eh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you ha- so you're working on a, that piece, the saxophone, right? You said saxophone? Yeah. I was making sure I was saying the right instrument. Mm-hmm. Saxophone for along the River's Edge Trail. Uh, and so you don't really do it in the winter because, well, at least right now because. Yeah, not when it's this cold. Yeah. If it's like 10 degrees out, I can heat up my shop to 35, 40 okay. degrees, so it's bearable. But if it's 20 below, I can heat it up to about zero is all. Yeah. Well, and you need. I have a little propane heaters yeah. I'll have in my shop. <laughs> well, you need challenging. The- function your hands need yeah. to function mm-hmm. well yeah, my I feet get assume. cold more than anything you yeah know, with big boots on yeah mm. so you it this just dawned on me like you're you're holding a bolt and then welding that little bolt right next to your fingers or do you have if a I tool have to, that holds it i can hold it with a pair of pliers or vice grips but a lot of stuff i've laid out 
pack together before I start welding it. Like oh, the tabletops okay. oh. and stuff are all laid out like a puzzle, and then I weld it together. Yeah, well, that makes Some sense. Some stuff like has to be puzzle. made. You like puzzles. Metal puzzles are fun. Yeah. I like metal puzzles. He clarified, yes. not cardboard puzzles. <laughs> yeah, some stuff has to be put together piece by piece. And but the sphere, you don't have that luxury of just laying something flat. I lay it all out in a bowl. Every piece for each half is laid out. Oh, wow. But then the problem is I use a stick welder. I don't have a MIG welder, which is a wire feed. A stick welder, if it sticks to a nut, It'll pull it out of the bowl, and then they all collapse into it, and you got to kind of start over. Oh, no. How many, <laughs> how many times has that happened on one project? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> More than <laughs> once. Like nightmares about it. Yeah, the big 24-inch bowl, it's hundreds of nuts to fill it, and then if they collapse, it's a lot oh, of work to like put them back rebuild. together. Yeah. yeah. I would just cuss and walk away. Like <laughs> that would have been the, have the patience for that. Yeah. Yeah. You had one shot at this sphere. You're done. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. I'd walk away. We're just doing. We're doing straight stuff. Mm-hmm. Flat tables. That's all yeah. I'm making. Uh, some stuff is a fun challenge, but other stuff gets a little. Why am I doing this mm-hmm. again? <laughs> yeah. When that happens, do you just take a break and walk away. Yeah, I'll have to take a break sometimes. Oh. But sometimes I'll be out in my shop for. Eight hours at a time. Yeah. Wow. That's a that's a lot of time with a welder and no. staring at the, yeah, it's a lot. I don't think I have the, well, I don't have any artistic ability for that to start with, but also the patience for that. Yeah. It's impressive. So you said you do commissioned pieces. Have you ever had like a, well, you said you haven't had a bust before. Would you do a bust of somebody? I've seen a bunch that are super okay. impressive, but I don't know if you'd have to have super specific parts to make yeah. like something that looks like someone, not just a person. Yeah, <laughs> like a the specific like, cheekbone structure or whatever. Yeah. Are you working off of any pictures when you create? Yeah, like, like this... an animal, I'll look at pictures of it. The saxophone, definitely. I've looked at dozens of pictures because mm-hmm. they all have different keys, but they're all you know in the same spots. So that one's going to be a challenge for me. I'm going to be studying a saxophone for months. Yeah, I'm excited because I think I'm. I'm. I know what I'm going to get Robert one year for his Christmas Ooh. present. I'm just going to have Alex start working on a bus. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> I and would then love when it's that. unveiled, I'll be like, "It's you, honey," and he'll go, "It doesn't really look like me." I'm like, "Oh, it does." It, but it does. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Alex did it from this picture. <laughs> Yeah, that'd that definitely would be... be a challenge, but I might be up for it someday. <laughs> I wouldn't promise anything, yeah. though. It's <laughs> my so most commissions. I don't charge anything, even a down payment till it's done, because wow. I don't know how they're going to feel about it, if they're going to love it, hate it, or yeah. think it's okay. And <laughs> So wow. in those situations, if I, you know, I'm a little more high maintenance and I get my bust of Robert back and it doesn't look like a human at all, I'm like, nope, this is just not going to work. Do you are you able to just tear everything apart and reuse the parts then? And uh, I definitely wouldn't charge the customer if they didn't like oh, it. Oh, you should probably still charge yeah. time, but mm-hmm. but try are, to salvage it into something else. Yeah, or can you still put a price tag on it? And cut sell it, it apart. Somewhere. Yeah, does it still work once you've welded the pieces together? Can you reuse a wrench from it? Yeah, you can cut stuff apart. You can. Okay. I don't have a cutting torch even, but <laughs> I have a grinder with cutoff wheels and that'll cut stuff apart. <laughs> the point is you don't do that very often, probably. Yeah, try yeah. not to cut anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so people, the, your artwork has become, I would say at least, pretty pretty famous along the River's Edge Trail and among the art scene in Great Falls. What does that mean to you to have your art play such a prominent role in people's experience along the river's edge trail or this mm-hmm. urban art culture in great falls it's definitely flattering and satisfying to see comments like on facebook and stuff people are like i'm in great falls for the weekend and i saw all this amazing stuff it's yeah kind of cool to be a part of that and like i said not just have stuff in my yard <laughs> where people can <laughs> see it. it's nice yeah that's really cool do you do do you put Christmas lights up on any of your stuff oh, out in your yard? I have a little mini tree in my yard that yeah. I put lights on, yeah. <laughs> nice. A little metal mini tree. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that could be really cool, like mm-hmm. have the you know, big enough bolt where you could weave the lights th- in and out. And yeah. See here you could do those for future Christmases, like mini ones with lights on them. There you go. Sell those I don't too. think he actually needs ideas from <laughs> us, but <laughs> I'm always we'll open still to new give ideas. Him. We'll still, we'll still give, give him. you our ideas. <laughs> He's going to go He's back like, to his office and go, jeez, 
<laughs> did that podcast, and those girls know nothing. <laughs> That's why I like commissions, because people give me crazy ideas that I wouldn't do on my own, yeah. but it turns out to be a fun project. Do so you I'm ha- always open for our new ideas. Okay, see? He's always open for new ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Not ours. Ideas that will actually be able to yeah. produce something. <laughs> He's going to go back and go, Mm-mm. yeah, that was just not helpful. <laughs> they didn't have any usable ideas. But I'll still uh, be kind. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so commission pieces, what kind of ones have you done that you're like, I never would have would have uh, dreamed of this? A helicopter. Oh, That cool. one was different. A little helicopter pad painted for it. Wow. And that was kind of a challenge. He's butter knives for the helicopter blades uh-huh. and just shaping the body yeah. something i would have never done on my own but That's it turned cool. out pretty cool is that in great falls somewhere yeah oh is I it on top it, of the o'hare motor in no i think it was <laughs> for a flight paramedic that made it for the pilot so oh, okay. the story behind that yeah one. yeah okay so is the butter is it a small scale then yeah, or you use multiple i think it was like 14 inches long okay about eight inches nine inches tall cool huh but the that's propeller neat. spin. Yeah. Ooh. That's cool. A working piece of art. Yes. Now I'm envisioning you could do like a C-130 out of. <laughs> he might as well I, just build an I'm airplane at that sticking. point. <laughs> well, it is an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> it's made out of metal. Oh, you yeah, mean definitely just build a real plane, airplane? <laughs> any plane would like a commission for a specific style. It's I like like studying pictures of things and trying yeah. to get them as detailed as possible when I do yeah. commissions. See, so call up the guard. Be like, hey, <laughs> we need this. Gonna make this another piece of artwork. A, a model C one thirty for you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need my ideas. Yeah, I'm hey, be quiet you know, now. <laughs> I think if you kept going, you'll find something good. I'm just saying. Thanks. Thanks. It's probably yeah. there, <laughs> deep down inside you somewhere. <laughs> uh, so. F- gr- Great Falls kid, we'll say here, you know, you had a couple other stops along the way. Uh, what do you like to do when you're not spending 100 hours a week welding? Uh, board sports, wakeboarding, oh, okay. snowboarding, nice. skateboarding, huh. uh, camping, Fun. hiking, fishing, pretty much anything outdoors I'll yeah. do. Nice. Try to go to Yellowstone and Glacier every year. Mm-hmm. Very close to Great Falls. Yeah. Which is your favorite park, Glacier or Yellowstone? I got to work in both of them, but I think oh, really? Glacier for cool. sure. Like the water, the geothermal features are cool in Yellowstone, but Glacier's waterfalls are amazing. Mm, yeah. What did you do when you worked in the parks? Mostly trail and fencing work through okay. Montana Conservation okay. Corps. Okay, yeah. I got to work with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, the uh, National Parks, BLM. Very cool. Got to do a lot of trail and fencing projects all thanks. over the state. So thanks to your work, the rest We're of us safe. can go <laughs> wander safely around. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> So this is really just at the core of your being, the the maintenance, the construction, that whole component of working with metal. It's just who you are. Yeah, all it's aspects. definitely become a huge part of my life. Yeah. Huh. Do you have a, are you, so you don't seem to be tired of it yet. Are you planning on continuing making all of this for a long, long time to come? As long as I can. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So we have lots more to look forward to. Just line the entire river's at 53 miles of the river's at trail with it. Yeah. That's the goal. So in addition to the works of art on the trail, the metal art, the um, painting that he did long, long time ago before we started broadcasting, uh-huh. <laughs> before we started recording this episode, <laughs> you shared that not only were you in the docuseries about your art, oh, yeah. but you were also in a movie. Uh, just an extra for the slaughter Oh, no, role. no, not just. <laughs> it wasn't a starring role. <laughs> An instrumental extra in... This is the slaughter rule when they film that here in Great Falls, at Great Falls High in a few locations. is extra in the art room and out on the football field. Oh, basically just sit and watch them film the movie. It's yeah. kind of a neat experience. Very cool. What do you remember about... I? I don't know anything about this movie, so tell it. I oh, sorry, I have no idea. Shannon, sometimes I wonder. <laughs> I never actually watched you... the movie after it came out, but it's a football <laughs> movie, basically about high school football, and I think Ryan Goslin was in it, and David what? Morse were the two main actors in it. Why have I never heard of this movie? It was the movie about why there is a slaughter rule in sports. Because oh, I was thinking Slaughterhouse. I keep thinking oh. it's called Slaughterhouse, and I didn't understand. No, there's another movie called Slaughterhouse Rules. Um, Cider House. 
slaughterhouse rules. We don't know. Separate movie though. Yeah, yeah different <laughs> movie, and it had a lot to do with people making cider. Um, I would hope it's not called Slaughterhouse then. <laughs> I think I think it is. We'll find out, okay. people, We've and we'll out. update you. But this you. one is called Slaughter what? Slaughter Rule. Slaughter Rule. Okay. So like if there's too many points spread between two teams yeah. playing each other, then yeah. the rule goes into play. And Sure. Okay. Ryan Gosling was in it? Yeah, and David Morse. Wow. I think there's one female actor that was kind of a big name, but okay. I can't remember who that was. I'm going to have to go look all this up. And then you haven't watched it. You went, didn't no. like look for yourself? No. <laughs> wow. He was in it. He doesn't, he doesn't need to he's look. He's like, I don't care. I was in it. I know what it's about. <laughs> uh, when, and this came out in early 2000s? Is that what you said? It was like 1998, 99 when okay. it was filmed. Okay. So it probably came out a little after that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, here. Artist and star. Look for him in that. Now, yeah, I really want to go look up this Do you movie. sing too, Alex? No, I just sat in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Thought maybe you were the triple threat. Dancing? Yeah. Maybe no. you dance? No Modeling? singing and dancing at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still think you got some pretty got pretty big... Good skills there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty big sphere <laughs> of influence. Oh, uh, sphere, sphere. See? I see what you did there. I'm pretty dang good. <laughs> just so natural, my punny abilities. Mm-hmm. Yes, she's very proud of herself. Look at her smile. <laughs> Sometimes I just make myself laugh. That's good. I'm glad you can. Yeah. No. So, <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> um, how about another tree? Wh- besides the willow, weeping willow, one of my favorite trees is a birch tree. Could do that. Have to be painted white. Yeah. Not much white metal out there. Made a few parts with like painted metal and left it the original paint on it because it's the color I wanted. But yeah, that'd be a fun challenge. I've wanted to make a larger tree too, somewhere 15, 20 feet tall, but that'd Ooh. have to be built in place. Yeah, you're so your I'd have to like come up with a that. concrete foundation and just start building off yeah. it. Yeah, that seems like a summer project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if anyone wants a large tree in their yard, I'd be up for a commission on Ooh. that. <laughs> Oh, here. Well, I was just going to bring up, I don't know if you noticed um, our car part um, sculpture. Yeah, that is, I've seen that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's by artist Jay Labor. He was from Browning and passed away in October last year, if I remember my news correctly. So we never got to meet him. But a lot of his artwork is old car parts and random things all put together. Which I think you two probably would have just been buddies if you got to know each other. But yeah, he um, he hangs out there all year long. Mm-hmm. The only tough part is I have no idea what his little headdress thing is made of. Hmm. But it reminds me of like a Brillo brush or oh, a yeah. steel brush. Mm-hmm. But I know they don't get that long. But there'll be leaves that get stuck in that. (laughs) So it just looks like a matted mess. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go out there and try to pull the leaves out. But it's it's a weapon if you really got too close. It is very sticky and stiff. I made a Venus flytrap. And it's got little nails for the little oh, sticky parts yeah. of it. And that's at Montana Mosaic. And they have to dust it off every once in a while. And I hear stories about the wounds they get <laughs> like from it. dusting it. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty dangerous piece yeah. of art. Hey, wow. it serves its purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't want to be touched. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we you like going to Glacier, Yellowstone, wakeboarding, uh, snowboarding, all of that. Where, did you compete in Wakefest last year? I did. Did you really? I took third out of the three Ooh. people that competed in the wakeboarding <laughs> hey, competition. Well done. <laughs> well done. Yeah. That's cool. And then do you do the snowboarding competitions up at Showdown? I haven't done a snowboarding competition since I was about 20 years old. Mm. It's been a long time. Yeah. But even the wakeboarding one, I hadn't wakeboarded. I've wakeboarded once in the last 10, 15 years. And then I wanted to do the competition hey, just to get behind the boat. Throw yourself in there. <laughs> I had like fun. It. There's nice. only three people that entered it, so I got third. Doesn't matter. Just good so you job. got third. That sounds good. You don't have to tell <laughs> how many contestants there yeah. were. I do that all the time. <laughs> it's about marketing. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> That's how you present the information. Uh, okay, so when we tell people to come to Great Falls, we share to go along the river's edge trail we share about mm-hmm. your art the urban art along the trail what are other things that you would recommend being from great falls that people mm. do or see when they're here mm. 
Riverdale's Trail is a big one if mm-hmm. you like walking, biking, anything like that. As far as, other, as far as other art, we got the Paris Gibbs Museum art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome place. Um, we we have Arts Fest Montana where murals are created. Have you ever thought about trying your hand at doing a mural? I've done a little bit of spray paint art, but just on poster paper. Hey, nothing yeah. on the side of a wall or anything. I think it's the next step. You know, Definitely what? impressed by what they've been doing in Great Falls the last few years. It's crazy. They do this VIP reception as part of the Arts Fest. And the mural artists will create something on canvas with a can of spray paint, multiple cans of spray paint, not just one color. <laughs> um, and that is crazy to watch because you would think, for me, it's the scaling. Uh, like you've talked about how you've done that. I think it would be impossible to do something large and then try to do something small. Mm-hmm. Like some of the art that they did this year had a lot of faces and eyes. Yeah. yeah. And the eyes on some of these ladies are as big as, they're five foot big. Mm-hmm. How do you scale back down? How do you scale yeah. up? How do you? <laughs> yeah, I did one mm-hmm. mural for Set Free downtown in their old yeah. building before they had their fire. When mm-hmm. I did that, I used a projector to project it on Ooh. the wall. Oh. Mm-hmm. And even then I had to get off the ladder, stand back and look at yeah. it just to for the scale of it. That would be challenging. Yes. I don't see how they do anything bigger than that. Yeah. Alex, I'm, I'm just going to say, um, maybe you should just stick to metal art because it seems like every time you venture out, there's fires involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. You, okay. Could you create a mural of sorts Ooh. with metal art? So yeah. it's just basically a like flat a wall. sculpture, like a wall mural instead of in a form just put it along a wall in some Could, way if you had like a tin or metal wall to tack everything to yeah oh i like cool. this idea i just It'd had be a... heavy though you need a sturdy yeah. wall so the <laughs> yeah. whole thing doesn't come down yeah. reinforce yeah. it yeah eh, just a little bit glue. yeah <laughs> Sure, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But that could be again, I'm not an artist, so I don't have no, you know, the logistics of it, but that could be a neat My daughter's mural done cool sorts. little mosaic metal art just gluing yeah. little pieces to picture frames oh, with yeah. paintings there you go. in the background. Mm-hmm. Oh. Some of those are really cool. So just little metal like pieces she found it. on my shop floor. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So she's is a little she, artist you, too. Yeah. Does she has she does she learn how to weld? Yet? She's welded a couple times yeah? with me. Yeah, cool. She likes it. Nice. Good for her. That's awesome. So I can't wait for the Daddy Daughter Project to yeah. hit, the, <laughs> hit the trail. Ooh, the what next What kind generation. of stuff is she drawn to? Is it completely different than the stuff you're drawn to or similar? Uh, she likes similar stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it does a lot of animal art. and okay. like She did one little mosaic picture of my towers and... Oh, wow. She did a picture of me cutting down our Christmas tree one year with metal oh, cool. parts and oh, a tree gosh. painted in the background. Wow. But Look at her. She does kind of random art here and there. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. How old is she? 13 13? Now. Okay. Her name's Rainin. Aw. Nice Next shout out from your dad. There. Yeah. Love it. Uh, okay. So we talked about if people come here, going along the River's Edge Trail, going to Periscopes and Square. Where would you tell people to go eat? What's one of your favorite spots to, to grab a drink? I'm a steak lover, so I mm. like Kobe Steakhouse. Yep. And again, that's, that's got metal art all around it by another yes, artist it does. here in town. <laughs> yeah. So that place is really good. Nice. Um, Cattleman's Cuts, another mm-hmm. good place for a steak. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But nice. Yeah, dozens of good restaurants yeah. in Great Falls. Absolutely. Mm hmm. I love our restaurants, but I also love that you can go get a steak from Central Avenue Meats and grill it up and at do home. it yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good place. Something about the farm kid in me just <laughs> yeah, well, likes that part of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite things. Do you know the artist who did the metalwork in front of Kobe? Yeah, uh, Mike Hollern's his name. I've talked oh. to him a couple times on Facebook, but I've never actually met him. Okay, but he's got some beautiful pieces around yeah. town yeah. too. Yeah, that's neat. That's that's appropriate that you would like the place that has <laughs> metal art around it. When I um, started trying to find artists for this docu series that we did, um, I had reached out to uh, John with the Out West Show at the time mm-hmm. uh, to connect because he had told me he was working on a portfolio for the metal artist. So I called him and I'm like, "Hey." You're working with Alex Smithson, right? Uh, and he's like, no, I've never heard of Alex. <laughs> so I'm like, no, you're doing a portfolio of all the metal art along the trail. 
nope, I'm working with Mike. And I was like, oh, oh. well, you should work with Alex. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, plug in that, for you. Didn't, that didn't help yeah. me. So then I had to stock you another way to find, <laughs> find <laughs> access to information. So she's yeah. been stalking you. I've always wondered how I got picked for that out of the millions of artists yeah. in America. Well, because... Because I'm in Great Falls and I like the tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, we try to pick, you know, there's the really cool thing about Great Falls is the variety of artists that are here. So mm-hmm. you've got the metal art, uh, Batik with uh, Echo Ukrainits. You've got pencil sculptor or pencil artists and oil, pastels, watercolor. There's not much from an art standpoint in Great Falls that isn't touched. You know, mm-hmm. every kind of modality is exists here, which is really neat. Yeah. But we wanted to be able to showcase that in this docu-series. And they told us, like, we were got we got it so excited. Like the list started getting so big and they're like, Yeah, we only need a list of ten people. What? How are we <laughs> supposed to limit this to ten people? And then they were gonna pick six from that. And mm. I said, Oh no, this is not gonna go That's well. A big challenge. So we really had to narrow it down based on the types of artists, you know, the wood artists that are here, the metal, the d- variety. And we also didn't want to be kind of pigeonholed into that Western art just because the Western art, yeah. a lot of times people will think of Great Falls and their art scene and just kind of think Sam Russell Museum and the Western art that exists here, but there's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we wanted to showcase there. Mm -hmm. And since the Weeping Willow is my favorite piece of art on the trail, I'm like, "Eh, I want... I want to see if Alex will do this. Mm. Never met him before. (laughs) Had never talked to him. I'm like, I hope he's good on camera. (laughs) It's definitely an honor to be a part of that. It's cool. What was that experience like when they were there? It's a little different. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's kind of fun, kind of nerve wracking at the same time, Mm -hmm. but it's interesting. Did they do 300 different shots from 20 different angles? <laughs> no, not really. They did one or two of each one, so mm-hmm. oh. went pretty smooth. Yeah. That's good. And where remind people where what this uh, is called and where they can find it? Uh, the Story of Art in America, and it's available mm-hmm. on Amazon mm-hmm. uh, for a fee. The great, there's an entire episode just on Great Falls Artists. Mm-hmm. And Alex stars in that. I think it's season or episode four. Four. Is mm-hmm. the one yep. Great Falls is in. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was going to say four or six, but I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> Did you watch that one? Did yeah, you watch I yourself watch in that one? Episode, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, Alex. We had Jackie Larson Brett, Brett Larson, mm-hmm. Larson Bread, um, who's a beater. Yeah, incredible Beads. Work. Mm-hmm. Um. Echo and Ron Ukrainitz were on there. Mm-hmm. Susie Lake. Susie Lake, mm-hmm. who um, a little bit more of, I'm going to say. Contemporary? Yeah, contemporary. There's some really cool cartoony style work she does. Amazing abstract stuff that she does. I just love, and a lot of it's large format mm-hmm. art. So that was another piece. And then um, we found a wood artist tom yeah yep tom dean and tom's work is a lot of sculpted amazing wood and Mm -hmm. elements there and then we had former stuntman who does 3d art makes wagons um as part of that i think we got a wide variety then shown that's great it was so I, I've fun. watched it. It's been a while, but I've, I have watched it. I, f- I forgot about the last one, though. Yeah. yeah. I'd coordinated everything. I was all excited, like best project coordination that had ever <laughs> existed on the planet Earth. And then the you weren't there for it. Yeah. The no. Two days before the film crew arrived, I was down and out at the house and kept thinking I could pull out, <laughs> pull it out and just be strong. And Jason just kept emailing me. I think maybe I'll just take this. I think I'll be fine. I'm like, yeah. I know you'll be fine, but this is my project. Yeah. Like, I want to, I want to see it. this. I want to be yeah. a part of it. I think it's going to be cool, and and it was. And Jason yeah. had a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I missed out. Yeah. On it. It was fun. <laughs> but they got to go to all these. Uh, mm-hmm. They wanted to film in the studios of the artists, mm-hmm. which was another factor that we thought was pretty pretty neat. 
because one of the ideas was we would just set everybody up like in the Russell Museum and fade everything in the back and everyone mm-hmm. would come in and and they're like no we want to be in their mm-hmm. studio and that was one of Alex's things and they like, asked me too if they could film me in my studio and I was like you realize my studio is like a five here? by yeah. ten wood shop that I can barely fit in they're like oh we'll make it work and then they got there and they looked in there and they're like oh oh you were kidding <laughs> so they crammed a camera and two people in there and yeah. made yeah. it work but yeah, it was wow. pretty tight fit yeah that was Alex big things like they want to film on site and Alex like uh I warned them and okay yeah. but this ain't gonna go real well. <laughs> Those are the best visuals, though. You want to see people in their element and doing yeah. their work, and yeah, that yeah, worked out pretty mm-hmm. well. That's cool. Okay, so find that on Amazon Prime. Watch all of those great artists on there. Yeah. Uh, where can so your where can people find you besides in Slaughter Rule, and what's <laughs> <laughs> called Slaughterhouse again, uh, and on the Story of Art in America. People can find you on social media. Where can people? I try Metal Art by Alex Smithson page on Facebook. I don't have any other social media. Okay. Still haven't put a website up yet, mm-hmm. but yeah, you'll eh, get you to it. You don't need it. You're getting <laughs> commissions. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get to it. Yeah. Well, and I really have appreciated finally getting to meet you <laughs> and talking about all your art. I think mm-hmm. it's I, you know, Shannon and I both are not artists, so I think we get more giddy about getting to visit with artists, people who can put something together and make it look like recognizable and who humor our, qu- our yeah. questions about <laughs> me like what happens uh, yeah um because honestly if i would have tried octopus n- no no one people would walk by and go oh what is it kind of like your first things. drawing that goes on the fridge <laughs> it's a picture of you mommy <laughs> okay. okay it looks like a fried egg pancake <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so it's good you're doing this yes. artwork and not us. Yes. Um, and greatest benefit of all of your artwork is we get to see it all the time. Yeah. Anytime we want to, we mm-hmm. can go on the trail and we can enjoy it. Uh, which I think is a, an amazing asset for our community. It is. It's one of the, I mean, I, I love great falls and I'm proud of our community. I'm proud to show what feels like hidden gems oftentimes to people and I really th- truly think your work along the River's Edge Trail is something that just makes Great Falls so unique it gives it so much character it shows that there's more of a story here and people here and culture here uh, so I really appreciate your work and I think it's part of what makes Great Falls special and shows off some of some of who our personality as a community oh, thank you yeah. so you're you're just the personality of our community now. Yeah. When people think of Great Falls, they're going to go, <laughs> Alex Smithson. Mm-hmm. So thanks for being here. Uh, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for hanging out with me, Shannon. And until... Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you kind of do, but <laughs> thank you anyway. Um, and listeners, um, we just love that you're hanging out with us whenever you can to listen to us while you're driving or working out or cleaning your house i don't know what you do but we but we love that you're we're <laughs> we're there with you mm. and um if you need help planning your trip to great falls we've got all the resources to help you um there's a hundred plus episodes before this just sit down start listening you'll be able to figure out what you want to do or you can call us 406-761-4436 or email us at information at visit And until we see your bright, smiling, happy, healthy face here in Great Falls, we hope you are having an amazing time creating memories with your friends and family. See you soon. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good.